The time has finally come to discuss a much awaited topic on the channel and that is handling or coping with imposter syndrome. Now if you didn't know this about me, I have suffered with imposter syndrome pretty badly for absolutely ages. And it's one of these things that doesn't really just crop up in tech, obviously it's huge in tech, that's where the name seems to come from, imposter syndrome, but we can just more generally refer to it as comparison where comparison is the absolute thief of joy and that's what happens in a lot of people's lives we look at the circumstances around us we see what everyone else is doing and it just eats away at our soul we feel unsatisfied with our circumstances and it's absolutely brutal now before we dive into the solutions, what I'd recommend doing about it if you feel like you suffer with imposter syndrome, the first thing I'm going to do is share with you some of the things that I struggle with on a daily basis just to help normalize the overall experience because it can be absolutely brutal. So if we go back a couple of years, I was originally a civil engineer. Now I didn't stick in that career and a big part of that was because if you didn't know that if you didn't know this about me, I also have a uh, pretty bad ADHD and I felt like when I was in a work environment and in an office surrounded by people, I just couldn't do the things that everyone else was doing. I couldn't stay focused. I couldn't care about anything else that everyone else was doing. And it just meant that everyone else, it felt like everyone else was getting ahead of me. They had an edge. They could do things that I just couldn't do. And it was so challenging for me to just sit in that environment. I was Every day was a battle. Uh, I experienced also what you know is some might know as sleep procrastination, which is where you dread going to sleep at night because you relinquish the control of the evening where there's no expectations on you. So, you know, I tried to jump into tech and I was successful in teaching myself how to code and getting a job. So that was a huge win for me. But, you know, even doing that, teaching yourself to code, everyone around you has a software engineering qualification, a comp sci qualification, so you immediately feel inadequate. You're learning to code, you struggle on a daily basis, a lot of people just pick up code like it's absolutely no worries, it's brutal. You just see everyone else around you excelling and you're just stuck on a bug for three days and it's just not working for you. So, you know, and it doesn't end there. Then you go to apply for jobs, you're up against thousands of candidates, you get hundreds of rejections. It's absolutely savage. And all you do is you just think like, am I insufficient? Am I inadequate? What what What's wrong with me that I can't achieve this success? And then you get a job in tech and then there's people who are just exceptional programmers and can just do crazy stuff that you can't imagine dreaming of. And then you have to deal with that, find a way to cope with it. Uh, once again, you just feel inadequate. You feel like you don't deserve to be at your company. You know, how are you going to become more senior when you can't do what these other people are doing? It's absolutely brutal. And as I kind of said earlier, it's not just in tech related things, you know, like I experienced this in civil engineering. Even growing up, I was pretty introverted. You see everyone else going to parties and stuff like that. And you just, it's just not you. Like you, you're, either you're not invited or you can't, you're not as popular or something like that. And you just wonder why why am I not like that? Can I not be like that? Is it something wrong with me? Uh, and it's a savage feeling. It just can, it can be very overwhelming at times. And so if that's something that you deal with on a, you know, even on a daily basis, I empathize with you. It's pretty brutal. Uh, and yeah, it comes under a category that I refer to as comparison. So this is, you know, I obviously experience it on a regular basis, but I would say the key difference now is that I feel like I have a lot of tools in my tool belt that helped me make it less of a deal. You know, I feel like I can cope with it better so it's not as significant. It doesn't impair me as significantly on a daily basis. So that's what I'm gonna kind of share with you now. And yeah, the first thing I think it's important to know is that imposter syndrome is just a more niche subset of comparison. So, you know, I have a YouTube channel. You're watching a YouTube video. I've uploaded more than a hundred videos to this channel and every, I can't watch YouTube now because every time I log onto YouTube, I see other YouTube channels making what I feel like is an equivalent video and they have 10 times the number of subscribers or the view count. 
and you know I just you know YouTube's brutal because you can't see why you know like I had a second channel and I uploaded a video to it to it and it randomly did a lot better than a lot of the videos on my current channel my main channel and it had terrible statistics compared to a lot of the videos that I make now and it's just like I have no idea why and so it's just you know all well, I can't watch YouTube because these other channels are just savage. Like, it just makes me feel demoralized, demotivated. Why can't I do this? Why am I inadequate? What's wrong with what I'm doing? You know, I've got other friends that start businesses and they might be earning millions of dollars in revenue. And it's like I've probably made 15 to 20 different side hustles. In addition, you know, the YouTube channel being one of them, in addition to working, and it's like, why can't I get my side hustles to stick? Why, what am I doing wrong? Why can everyone else achieve that level of success? You know, it's, it's a brutal process. So that's my struggle. Everyone experiences it differently. You know, like a lot of people are on Instagram, they see everyone else having these highlight reels, and they feel like they're not doing enough they, they're not conforming where everyone else conforms. Why can't I conform the same? It's tough. And so what we're going to do now, after experiencing all of the things that we're not, we're going to take a deep breath. Everybody take a deep breath. And now we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do to ease the impact, how emotional this experience can be for you. So the first thing that is critical well, you don't have to do this, but this has really helped me, is uh, avoid social media. I don't have a Facebook account. I don't really use Instagram. I am on YouTube, obviously, and, you know, I'm on LinkedIn because I have to be, but otherwise I wouldn't be. Uh, and my, it's just so, it eases my conscience like you, you wouldn't believe. I have friends who go on social media and they come away from it feeling inadequate and feeling the, you know, the despair of comparison and it's just not something that I feel like we're socially wired for you know we evolutionarily had communities of 30 people we weren't seeing you know if you have a community of 50,000 people that you're exposed to on a regular basis you're going to see all the success stories all the highlight reels and so you know you're going to end up comparing yourself to a minute a minuscule percentile of people and you're never going to beat them so it's savage so that's the first thing i recommend for me like people think they're missing out you're not it's a weight off your shoulders it's just not on my mind i don't think about it i don't even know what i'm missing out on peace of mind that's the first thing that's really helped me that i'd recommend giving a shot the second thing uh that i'd recommend is the practice of internal gratitude you know a brilliant example is my youtube channel I, so e it's so easy for me to think about all the things that I haven't had happen on my YouTube channel. But the reality is that I have to remind myself, I have to actively do this as an active process. I have to remind myself of the success that my YouTube channel has had. All the great things it's achieved, all the kind messages I receive from people who feel supported, gain value from my YouTube and appreciate the videos that I make. And I... You know, I released, released a little SaaS platform recently and it's been, it's had the best success of anything I've ever released. And I'm like literally not even joking, 15 to 20 projects deep. For the first time, I've actually had some positive feedback. And, you know, like just the in process of internal gratitude is reframing your perspective where when we spend all this time looking outwards at what everyone else has, we neglect the time looking inwards, appreciating what we have. And, you know, you can even, you can even lose direction. So, you know, if you're looking at what everyone else is doing, you lose the direction of the things that feel genuine to you. Uh, and that alignment is critical. So taking the time intentionally taking the time to just look inwards and feel aligned with the things that you value can help you stop comparing to different people doing different things and the t the way that i refer to this is like stick to your lane you know i get so easily distracted by what other people are doing feeling like i should be doing it but 
you know, I always have to recenter myself, even with content on YouTube. I see people making like viral videos and I'm like, should I try that? It's like, no, James, just make educational content. That's your strength. Stick to it. Don't look elsewhere. Just practice that internal gratitude and you'll learn the things that feel genuine to you. Uh, there's a term, it's not coming to me in this moment, but it's all about the alignment. Uh, being Self-actualization is the, the term. That's your internal needs and wants aligning with your external doings. Uh, and so just taking a minute to reset yourself, focus inwards, being grateful for all the amazing things that you have. You know, I'm so grateful for the audience that I've achieved. Uh, and just, it helps you reset, make, create goals that are relevant to you and no one else. Um, now, obviously we can't live in a world where you just ignore what everyone else is doing. Uh, and so the next thing is what I feel like helps me when I can't avoid being around people who I feel like are more exceptional than I am. And basically, once again, it's an active process that over time becomes easier. I think you could probably refer to it as like a CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy practice. And I always remind myself that my goal isn't to be the most exceptional person in the room. I, I always want to be the person who is there to celebrate and support the most exceptional people in the room. Like I would much rather not have the glory for myself and just be someone who, you know, is friendly and supportive and is happy to help others be better than themselves. Uh, and it just helps me detach from this feeling that I need to be exceptional. You know, I, and it's kind of ironic because I'm trying to be the best at being the most like supportive instead. But for me, it's like, it's a very humbling mentality that helps me detach from this need to be the best. Uh, and doing the internal gratitude, in addition to trying to like support others and, you know, really actively trying to, instead of someone else being brilliant and me feeling inadequate and trying to like, you know, pull them down, just like celebrating them. It's hard at first, but it gets easier. And it just really, it, get, it almost makes me feel warm inside. And doing that whilst practicing internal gratitude of the things that I am achieving, I have done, instead of focusing so much on what I haven't done, what I don't have, for me, just becomes more natural and it really helps me cope with feelings of inadequacy and the, you know, the toxicity of comparison and uh, imposter syndrome. Anyway, that's pretty much my whole spiel on the imposter situation, imposter syndrome situation. And I hope some of the experiences and tips or strategies that I use that work for me uh, help support you through that experience as well. Um, and just always know that it's the most natural thing in the world. You know, when you get into tech, you either have the confidence of a God and you, you know, fall into the pit of elitism, which isn't good, or you develop severe imposter syndrome. And, you know, I'm the latter. If you are too, just know that it's okay. There are strategies that you can employ to help make it feel more manageable and just know that you are awesome in your own unique way. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, smash the like and subscribe buttons. I uh, appreciate that support and I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the learn to code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos. That's a good one.